this episode, can my phone camera actually cut it? Can we not just get a brilliant shot with a supposedly 50 megapixel camera on a thousand dollar phone? That should give me a nice bit of motion blur. So I'm gonna take the shot, stand over it like an ogre. I mean, surely it's gotta be half decent, surely. Oh, oh, oh God, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting annoyed now. See how this stacks up against the Sony. It looks like it's exposed perfectly for the water, but everything else is super dark. Ah, oh, this is gonna look weird and <laughs> it's quite painful, but, but I'm a tight-ass Yorkshireman and I refuse to give in. In today's video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do one of those stupid and pointless comparison videos that compares my new phone to my very, very expensive full frame Sony mirrorless A1 camera system with another expensive, fairly expensive lens to see if this can measure up. Now I am not getting paid by any camera manufacturer. I'm not getting a freebie, nothing. But, but you know, if you're watching, you know, want to give me some money or, or even some freebies, get in touch. No, the reason why I'm doing this comparison is because every few years I'm forced to buy a new camera. I mean, usually they like you to buy one every year by deliberately slowing down the operating system until it becomes unbearable and you just buy a new phone. But I'm a tight-ass Yorkshireman and I refuse to give in. So it's, it's four or five years before I give in and then buy a new phone. And even then I don't buy them, I don't pay for them. I get one of those monthly plans where they hide the cost of the phone and you just kind of pay it over a few years. That's what I usually do. But I'm still quite curious to see how the technology has improved over the last four or five years in these new cameras. Because the truth is, I, I would love for phone cameras to be a viable alternative to carrying around all this heavy and ridiculously expensive and complicated gear. If I could just use that and get the same quality of shots at much more convenience, I would absolutely love that. But I doubt that it's anywhere near what I'd like it to be. But we'll see. I'm going to do a comparison in this video. Now, I have never shot properly with this phone app before. This is the first time I've put it on a tripod. And I do know that from a quick look that it does have like a pro mode, but I haven't delved into it. I haven't done any research. And the reason why I haven't bothered to do any research is because I feel it should be intuitive. That's the whole point of these phones, right? So if that app, that camera app on that phone is not intuitive and it's annoying and I can't figure it out, well, well, that's a failure already. But most importantly, I'm interested in the image quality because if I can get sharp, clean, high resolution images out of the 50 megapixel sensor on these three different lenses, well, it should in theory compare to my Sony A1, which is also a 50 megapixel camera. I mean, surely it's got to be half decent. Surely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a fairly convenient composition because I don't want to faff about learning this while I'm standing in the middle of a river. Once I figured out how it all works, then maybe I'll, I'll get in the river. But I'm going to do my best to try and get a shot that's half decent with this camera and then when I found a half decent comp, I'll then set up the Sony A1, put it on the tripod and, and frame up as close to the same composition as I can get. And we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison and see how this stacks up against the Sony. Now it's worth mentioning that I think if you were to buy this phone, like I said, I didn't buy it, it's on a, it's on a monthly plan. I think if you were to buy this phone, it's probably about a thousand Canadian dollars. So in my mind, I would attribute about 200 to $300 worth of that price to the camera technology. I think that's a fair assessment. It's not all about the camera when you buy these expensive devices. So you compare that to, I think it's $9,000 for that Sony A1 and then plus about $1,500 for the 14 to 24 lens that I put on it. That is an incredible price difference. So we'll, we'll see, I'm not realistically expecting <laughs> this phone to be even remotely close to that camera's image quality, but what I'd love to see is it's actually a viable alternative, something that I'll always have in my pocket 
and at great convenience I can just take a shot anytime I want although as you can see I've got it on the tripod so I still have to lug around a tripod but wouldn't it be fantastic if I could just lug around just a camera and just a tripod and that's it none of that other stuff that's that's what I would really like and I know loads of photographers that use their phones as quick compositional sketch pads just to get ideas just rush around the scene get some ideas and then they get serious and take out the the big guns but really come on after all these years can we not just get a brilliant shot with a supposedly 50 megapixel camera on a thousand dollar phone can we not we shall see okay so i've framed up this okay composition like i said I'm going to try here first where it's convenient to stand and then if I think I've got a chance of a killer shot then I'll get into the river but for now with all this faffing about let, let's just stay where it's comfortable so one of the big gripes I always had with camera phones is that you couldn't have full manual control you couldn't do long exposures there's the, the, pretty much all the stuff that you take for granted with your full frame mirrorless or, or microphone thirds or crop or whatever you just couldn't do with phones but they have improved it quite a lot now this particular camera i think you, you've basically got three different uh, focal lengths which i think are three different lenses with three different cameras and each one has a different sensor i think that's how the technology works uh, but you can change the exposure value you can change the iso the only thing you can't change with this particular camera is the aperture so you, you're stuck with a super wide bright aperture so i don't know if this is going to work because i want to do a long exposure of this waterfall now if i go into a hit more i'll go into pro mode this is where you can change all your settings so the first thing i want to change really is the speed the shutter speed so i'm going to go to my shutter speed there and i want to get at least one tenth of a second so I'm going to change this to one tenth of a second and you, you can see it's it's really blown out well I'm gonna to have to use an ND filter I'll have to pull one out of my pocket so let me just see what I've got where is it Let's see. so I've got an ND filter and I think it's a I think there's a polarizer as well maybe if that's not dark enough maybe I'll, I'll add another one but if you watch this if I just put this over the the lens there that's getting me closer to the kind of brightness that I want so I'm gonna do this I've got a 10 second timer on I'm gonna hit that button and then sneakily get this filter over here and see what this shot looks like now I'm using a 10 second timer because it's kind of wobbly on this tripod so let me just put that back in my pocket there's gonna be a lot of happening about I'll tell you in fact, Maybe I'll take these uh, gloves off. So let's look at the playback on that image. And that looks absolutely crap, as you can see. Something went wrong there. So I'm gonna have to do it again. Get my filter out. Now, if you were serious about doing this, I guess you'd have a filter system that you could just clip onto the front of the camera, but I'm just faffing about here. Okay, let's try it again. 10 second timer. Get me filter. Stick it in front and hold it in place okay now let's look at that shot all right so that's our shot let's uh, let's punch in and see how it looks i think it's focused i just used the manual focus but look at that we actually have a pleasing looking waterfall there i'd like a little bit more streak to it but one tenth of a second is good one sixth of a second would be my favorite now you can see if i just zoom out all that you can it looks like it's exposed perfectly for the water but everything else is super dark so i'll have to bracket this and, and that's going to be another test to see if that's even a viable option so let's go well let's just take this down let's just make this what it should look like what it should be maybe we'll take it to about there 145th of a second and i'll just take that shot without the filter this time let's we'll see if it looks any good okay it's taking a shot let's punch in and have a look looks fairly sharp the colors look pretty pretty realistic so obviously the water is completely blown out that's okay i would i would mask that in from that first exposure but i think that might be all right it's really difficult to tell without an evf 
to be able to kind of zoom in and punch in and check, but I think that was all right. All right, so now let's look at those two files that I just shot and see if they're any good. And it, you might notice straight away that this is actually a JPEG and a pretty low resolution one at that. Look at this, it's 3.6 meg and 72 pixels per inch. So this was shot in the pro mode. So perhaps there's something I messed up or there's a, a setting that you can change, but that's not particularly pro to me because we've got an extremely low resolution JPEG of this shot. It's almost like a, a thumbnail preview. Now I've looked on the camera and I, I can't find either a raw file for this image and I can't find a high resolution JPEG either. This is all that I've got. So perhaps I messed up, I really don't know, but let's just open the file in Adobe Camera Raw and look at it and see, see how sharp it looks and see what we've got. And uh, if I just zoom in, you can see that it actually looks like a bag of well-chewed pork scratchings and not at all what I was hoping for. Obviously dynamic range is atrocious. Uh, this waterfall is brighter than a thousand suns. And of course the shadow detail, I probably can't do much with that either. And you can see from here that I've actually pulled down these highlights a little bit. So if I just switch that off, that's how it came out of the camera. Uh, if you look at the sharpness, you can see I've added a little bit of sharpness, which I, if I switch that off, that's how it came out of the camera. If I add this tiny amount of sharpening, it looks like a dropped bag of ramen noodles. So something has probably gone wrong in my shooting settings. Let's just close that. And it, it, also, if you look at the aspect ratio, you'll see that this is like a, a four by two pano type of aspect ratio, which I don't remember setting on the camera. So as I said, maybe I've messed something up. Hopefully this can be changed. And also I'll point out that this was the, the medium focal length camera out of the three cameras. So I'm hoping that when I use the wide angle next, I'm going to get a better result. But so far, the, these two images are, are not really encouraging me to rely solely upon my phone camera. One thing I did see on this camera was there was like an expert raw mode. So you click on more, expert raw. I don't know what this does. I don't know what this is. The white balance is okay. So focus, let's, let's look at focus here. So this is manual focus. So you just push it up and down and it'll give you these green dancing lines to indicate where focus is. And I did have a sort of little play with this. I know I said I didn't use this much in earnest. I, I really didn't use it for more than like five seconds. So, I mean, to me, that suggests to me that pretty much everything is in focus, which I find difficult to believe at an aperture of 1.4 or whatever it is. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it's, it's focused. So to me, that looks like I've got the focus correct. Let's do a test shot. So hit that, 10 second timer. And I believe now, because I'm in expert raw mode, I believe this is shooting a raw file, but we'll see. Okay, <clears throat> let's zoom in. Have a butcher's at that. So zoom in. So. I can't get in any further. That's that's really, really infuriating. So I can't zoom in and check my focus. So to, to me, that's a major app failure. Now, for all I know, the camera took a shot and it's sharp and it's great, but I don't know because it's it's not letting me punch in. It has this Lightroom thing, kind of forcing me to download the Lightroom app. I don't want to do that. Just show me a preview of the file and uh, let me see if I got it sharp. So did I nail focus? Well, before I zoom in and show you how sharp this image is, first of all, just look down here, you'll notice that it's a .dng file. So it is now a proper high resolution raw file, which you can also see by just the size of the file. It's over 130 meg and look at the pixels. So I'm hoping that I've, I've corrected my user error in that first test by switching to this expert raw mode this does look genuinely like a high resolution raw file so let's just open this in adobe camera raw and zoom in and we'll see if i nailed focus with the manual focus so let's zoom in and oh oh you can see immediately 
that this has about as much sharpness as Thomas Heaton after three sips of a weak lager shandy. So I'm quite disappointed in the, the manual focus on that camera phone. I, I felt sure that I'd nailed it with that uh, focus peaking preview, but clearly I've messed it up. I'm gonna have to try again. So I, I find that quite frustrating. So let's go back to, how do I get out of this now? Okay, right, so back to Pro. Now let's try focus, let's try, what's this multi here? So can I just like tap on that one? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what it's doing with the focus. I honestly couldn't tell you. So let's go back to this lens. Yeah, it, annoying. I, f I find this annoying. It's, it's, I don't have confidence in this. So let's go back to, oh my God. It, oh, it, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is painful. Let's go back to focus. Let's try this, focus center. And I guess that's where it's gonna focus, right in the middle of the frame. Let's see, let's take a shot. My arm's getting really heavy. I'm, I'm already annoyed with this. This is not instilling me with confidence. Right, okay, let's see. So I'm, I'm gonna guess that this is a JPEG and that's probably why it's letting me zoom in. It looks so jagged and nasty. It doesn't doesn't inspire me on the back of the camera oh oh, oh god I, i'm getting i'm getting annoyed now i'm getting really annoyed okay give me give me two minutes to faff around with this and see if i can figure out how to use it because this is probably as painful for you as it is for me and then if i can figure it out i'm gonna go and stand in the river and take a proper shot which i will then shoot even better with this camera <laughs> i'm only joking i'm sure i'm sure this camera can do a good job this is driving me a, a little bit mental, but I think what I've decided is that the, the autofocus actually gives you a better focus. It seems like the sharpest on playback, but th this is where it all falls down for me. If, if you can't give me a playback that proves to me whether or not I got perfect focus, it's useless. It, it all falls down. Whereas, you know, with these pro cameras, I know before I've even taken a shot, I know I've nailed perfect focus. And even if I had any doubts, I can always check the playback, zoom in and see that it was perfectly crisp. With this, I, I, I just can't, I have to go on faith. So the question is, do I get in the river and uh, try and get a shot knowing that it might be completely out of focus? I mean, I'd have to get my feet wet. They would stink the car out for the rest of the day. Amanda would suffer terribly on the drive home. So I think I'll get in the river. <laughs> Okay, so I've got my, there you go. <laughs> I've got my, my arm's not long enough for this job. I've got my uh, phone set up with a composition that I actually really like. And it looks fantastic on the back of the phone, I've got to say. And you just saw it in that little video clip there, which I hope was focused, who knows. Uh, but anyway, I'm filming it from the back of this. This is extremely uncomfortable. Uh, this is gonna look weird and <laughs> it's quite painful, but. Let me just talk you through this shot. Now, what you're looking at on the back of here is just a, a white mush. But if I just get this ND filter out and then just place it in front of this lens here, there you can see my composition, which I actually really like. And as always, I'm just not confident that I've, I've got focus. So, oh God, hang on. Get back in there. There you go. Oh. So what I'm going to do is just play around with these settings a little bit whilst not filming on this camera because it's just too painful because I have to play with this ND. And let me just see if I can figure this out. If I have to focus stack this, that's totally fine. I can do that. I don't expect the camera to get everything perfectly in focus at f1.4. It's ridiculous. Uh, but if I can focus stack it, I can figure that out. That will be awesome, so that is my shot. So, it's at one tenth of a second. You can see it's at one tenth of a second there. That should give me a nice bit of motion blur. So, I'm gonna take the shot. That's a 10 second timer. And then stand over it like an ogre. 
with this filter and hope that I don't touch the lens. Now let's look at that. That actually looks pretty awesome except for that completely blown out water there. If you told me 10 years ago that I could capture this with my phone, I'd never believe it. But let's take a closer look at the image file. Okay, so this is the full raw file that you just saw a crop from. So if you look down here, you see it's a DNG file and it's just over 104 meg. And just from, just from this preview, I can already see this is a lot better. Now, one thing I'll draw your attention to is this ISO 25. Now, I, I don't remember setting it to ISO 25. I thought that the lowest I could go was ISO 50. So somehow that's got set to ISO 25. Maybe I missed something, but it's, it's kind of good because that probably acts as a fake digital ND filter so that you can shoot one sixth of a second, even at an aperture of f 1.8, which is super bright. So I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm, I'm glad it's there because it, it's kind of cool. And so far the image looks great. So let's just right click, open in Adobe Camera Raw, and let's just look at what we got out of that super wide angle lens slash camera on my phone. So I'm just gonna zoom in to about there and look at the detail. That is infinitely better than what I got with the first shot with the uh, the medium focal length. It's a little bit soft around the edges. You can see that's, that's blurring off and it's the same on this side here, but the, the center sharpness is excellent. If you look at this, this rock, in the foreground that's superb now i think i focused somewhere around here so of course the background is not focused it's a little bit blurry but that's what you're going to expect if you're shooting at f 1.8 and you're quite close to your foreground i'll just zoom in again a little bit more i'll go to the detail tab here so i've added some sharpening quite aggressive sharpening actually but if i switch that off the zero sharpening added to that raw file and it actually looks pretty pretty sharp let's allow that to come back in and we will probably take the masking down to about there that actually looks to be honest I, I, i'm blown away that that is <laughs> from a camera phone I, I i didn't really expect that at all let's just zoom out now in terms of the dynamic range i'll just go back to this area here you can see that that's that's blown out even though the histogram is not saying that there's a problem I can see with my own two eyes that that's just complete lack of detail in these these white hot spots. And, you know, it's far from perfect. I would say that's far from professional level. I mean, if you look at this up here, that it's just kind of blocky. But it, it's so much better than it used to be. You know, I, I don't think from this image that this is a realistic alternative to a, a pro high-end camera but it's definitely getting a lot closer and I'm, I'm quite encouraged with what I can do. In a pinch, if, if my battery died on my camera, it wouldn't necessarily be a complete disaster if you had to revert to your phone to capture a shot like this. All right, so that's the shots that I've taken with the phone. Now I'm gonna move this camera into the same position and try and get a similar composition. It's not gonna be exactly the same, different sensor size, different lens and all that. But I'll try and get as close as I can and then we'll compare the two after I've taken this shot. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the pro camera was infinitely easier to use. But what about the images? So this is the same shot or as close to the same shot as I could get with the Sony A1 50 megapixel mirrorless camera and the Sigma 14 to 24 lens. And the first thing that you'll see if you look at the settings is this was shot with an aperture of f13 so because this is a fully functional camera system i can change the aperture and stop down to whatever i want so that i can achieve that perfect one sixth of a second shutter speed and then you'll see also it's iso 50. so let's right click on this and then open in camera raw 
and we'll just look at this closely. So the first thing that I notice with this image is just from from this zoomed out perspective is the dynamic range is so much better if you look i'll just switch this off if you look at that's exactly how it came out of the camera with nothing changed if i switch that back on you can see that i've boosted up the shadows so let's take that down i've boosted up the shadows to bring out all of this detail that the whites i've pulled those down to reclaim all of that lost detail in these very bright hot spots so of course this is on a whole different level in terms of dynamic range to the phone but when you zoom in and you look at the the sharpness and the detail it's actually not a huge amount better than the phone you can see in the corners there's a lot more corner sharpness but that's because i was stopped down to f13 now this will probably be quite a bit sharper if i'd shot at something like f8 something slightly more wide open but i wanted to slow the shutter down and i also want to get as much of this foreground in focus as i could you'll see that this really close rock is mostly in focus and that's that's why i chose f13 so in terms of dynamic range yeah the, the pro camera is in a different league but in terms of just detail and sharpness in the focused parts of the area it's not a million miles away. And that really does encourage me to experiment a little bit more with my phone. Now, the question is, do I try a different phone? Perhaps a different manufacturer has a better app or better control. I'd be curious to, uh, to borrow my wife's phone maybe next week and see what hers can do because it's a different system. But if you're interested in that kind of content, if this is something that you're also curious about and you want to experiment with, post a comment and let me know what you think because I I'm quite curious to, to sort of experiment a little bit more with this technology because like I said, wouldn't it be very convenient if we could get shots that were this good with something that's just always in our pocket. So when we look at the results of these two cameras side by side, there's an obvious improvement in color, dynamic range and detail in the pro camera. But do you see a $9,000 difference?